This is the cover of the book. It looks like this. You'll notice it's not light. Um, some 600 and some pages, but the school is 200 years old after all. And so it took a while to try and get it all in. And the college bookstore happens to have copies, and there is a signing opportunity at Otto's on the first Friday in February, uh, for those of you who may be interested. What I plan to do is to share with you an overview of the history of the school, hitting a few highlights along the way, telling a few stories, anecdotes, but I want to say something as I get started. I'm one of those people believe, who believes that everyone is a historian. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, I can probably get you to agree that at least on April 15th, every year, you do a little history work in order to prepare for that day. And you know that if you're not accurate, someone may visit you and invite you to prove that in fact what you've written down is true. But we are really historians in many other aspects of our lives. Historians ask a very simple question. How do we get the way we are? And so you can treat that biologically in terms of your family genealogy and history. You can treat it economically in terms of your life. You can treat it educationally. There's lots of different ways that you can tell the history story. What I've tried to do is tell the story of Lycoming College, how it got the way it is. And you will notice that the title is on the frontiers of American education. There have been a number of frontiers of American education. Common schools, preparatory schools, junior colleges, colleges, universities, the most recent, the online universities. Lots of different kinds, and that's just a few of the many. This says the frontiers of American education, not American higher education. Because Lycoming College began as an academy and then became what we would today call a preparatory school, then was called a seminary. And so it began really as a kind of private high school. The only ones really, the academies, the only ones really in existence then. It was before pre-public education in Pennsylvania. And so it is on the frontiers of American education. Now, I'm going to move right along. There are several sections, and I'll point them out as we proceed. The introduction, and this is a collection of the five frontiers of American education. On the upper left-hand corner is the Academy building. I think it's safe to say that no one here has ever seen it because it was torn down in the 1920s. Well, there may have been a couple of you that didn't see it. We won't go there. In the center is the most familiar historic form of the school, and that is the Old Main that began as an academy, the left end or the west end, then became Dickinson Seminary, and then Dickinson Seminary and Junior College, and was still standing when Lycoming College began in 1947. <clears throat> Third, on the upper right, is Clark Chapel. It is the only building built in the Junior College years. It was built in 1939. And so it sort of stands for the Junior College phase of the school's history. In the lower left is the Work Student Center, built in 1958-59, subsequently <coughs> named for Bishop Words. It is the symbol of Lycoming College and was the first student center on campus. Before that, everything took place in Old Main. Everything took place in Old Main. Well, almost. And on the lower right is the Welsh Honors Hall. 
and that stands for the last of the frontiers. So the academy in the upper left, the seminary in the middle, the junior college in the upper right, the college in the lower left, and then the fifth frontier. And that frontier is as a national liberal arts college. It's a little different kind of frontier than the others, but it is something that the Carnegie um, Academy or Institution for the Advancement of Learning has identified a series of national liberal arts colleges beginning in the year 2000. And Lycoming was on the list. It's a very prestigious list, 212 schools. And if you think of the old classic small liberal arts colleges, Amherst, Oberlin, Wesleyan, Bryn Mawr, Swarthmore, Lafayette, Dickinson, Lycoming, they're on that particular list. It's a very special list when you consider there are over 5,000 colleges and universities in the country. So it's a very defined list. This is the Academy. The Academy was founded in 1812 and ceased to exist when it became part of Dickinson Seminary in 1848, 36 years. Um, I know you all recognize that this is an eight-sided building. You don't. Well, it is, believe it or not. And for that reason was sometimes called the Octagon School. In 1812, they did not have electricity, believe it or not. And so schools were built with maximum number of windows, with the desks sat, uh, sitting facing them. <coughs> this building was, when it was built, on the corner of West Street and East Third, and West Third. That puts it roughly on the end of the property, the Third Street property, where the water company is, across from the new jail. And at the time it was built, this front of it had a clear view of the mountains across the way. Now, you might say, what is this church doing here? This is the Williamsport Church, not the first one, the second one built in 1844. And the reason it's here is that the pastor of this church at the time Dickinson Seminary organized was involved in the organization of the seminary. The school, the seminary, was going to meet in the old academy <laughs> building, which was in such disrepair that this became the site of the first classes for Dickinson Seminary. For roughly three months, the students met here in 1848 for their classes in the Sunday school rooms. So I thought it appropriate to put the church up. Uh, 1844 is the year it was built. 48 is the year it served as the first classroom. Dickinson Seminary, the left end of this was a, an academy building built in 1839. It was only two stories, but it had the cupola, the tower on the top. And later on, they took the tower off, set it on the ground, built two more stories, and put the tower back up on top. That was in 1867. And then that was the old main. One of the original plans was to put a tower in the center, a very tall tower. Never had the money to do it, and you'll see that there was a kind of short tower there when this picture was taken. This is roughly... Uh, the 1867 68 picture. This is Clark Memorial Chapel. Uh, Martha Clark donated the funds for it, but she had it named for her family, not just for her. And she gave the funds, and it was a chapel on the upper side, and underneath was the college dining room. For many years, that's where students ate. Anybody here go to school there when you ate in the dining room? <coughs> oh, a good many of you. Very good. It was in these years when it was built that it was Dickinson Junior College. So the academy, 1812 to 48. The seminary, 1848 to 1949. 47, 48. 
And then this junior college began in 1929 and continued. Now, you may have noticed that I've said academy, I mean seminary, Dickinson Seminary and Junior College in the same breath. It never was just a junior college. It was Dickinson <coughs> Seminary and Junior College, but it was never a separate junior college. It was always that carryover title. So it's a little unusual the way they did it. Lycoming <laughs> College emerged in 1947. First class graduated in 1949. Nancy Lady's husband, Andy, was in that first <coughs> class. Is there anyone else here who was in that first class, 1949? Um, and it was uh, an interesting kind of setting because in 1947, it was not yet a college. And so a lot of students were faced with transferring to colleges. And because there were so many veterans returning to schools, lots of schools weren't taking transfer students. Dickinson College, that used to take a lot of transfer students, took none in 1948. And so one of the issues was, what can be done? And a proposal was to transform the junior college into a senior college. So that the students who were at the end of their junior college year in 47 could stay and graduate with four years in, like, in 49. So that's what's happened. And this is the new frontier, the Welsh Honours Hall. <coughs> <coughs>